there, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Forks Market Preview. I am Jason Stapleton. I'm your, uh, I'm the guy who's going to show you what we're looking at for next week in the currency markets. And uh, this week, just a terrible, terrible week of trading for me. We had one good trade, the New Zealand trade, that uh, fell off like a cliff on Monday morning. And the rest of it was just pure junk all week long. I'm going to show you a little bit about what I tried to do this week and what I failed at. But pretty much, I could have faded my own trades this week and done really, really well. Uh, you know, and that goes to the point that I will just make that not every week is your week. And sometimes you're going to have weeks and weeks where it's not your week. And when those t th start things start to happen, uh, the best thing that you can do is start dialing back your position size, uh, start... Um, you know, r make sure you're following your plan, but ultimately just keep your powder dry and try and limit the amount of downside that you ex you're exposed to uh, until things begin to, to work in your favor again. There's no easy way to deal with a drawdown. You just have to buck up and recognize that drawdowns are part of trading. And unfortunately, this week was more than, <laughs> it was just a terrible week. There's no no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So um, anyway, for those of you who are in the syndicate, no doubt. Uh, Keel had a couple of decent trades go off in the syndicate this week. Uh, I actually I closed out a, a pound position for about 220 pips this week, and I'm going to show you what a bad decision that was here in just a minute. But ultimately... You know, it just it's it's one of those things. It's it's just it was a it was just a bad week, and uh, I would love to be able to come back and say something different and talk about you know all the great progress I had this week, but I just didn't have it. So let's talk about this week and what hopefully will be a much better week for us um, as we go through this week. So let me figure out. There we go. What button I hit in order to switch this stuff? Let's start off with the pound. Now, I told you that I closed it out for about 220 pips of profit. That was excellent. I closed it out somewhere. The problem is I closed it out somewhere around here on the short side. And then you can see what's happened since then. We've just broken structure all the way to the downside. And now we are looking at some continuation trend down to around the 127 extension. And so if you well, this is what I would this is what I would do uh, and what I'm going to be doing this week is I'm going to I'm going to cross my fingers for a little rally back up into around 61s, almost 61s at the previous structure level. Um, it's funny, I, I don't normally talk about the uh, um, the other market. Dad, gimlet, what is going on here? Hang on a minute. Um, let's just do this. Ah, that'll work. Um I don't normally talk about, there we go, I don't normally talk about uh, the equities market in, in the Forex market preview, but I'm looking at what's happening in the equities market and the slide we saw in U.S. equities. The reason that we're seeing the rally out of the dollar this week is because there was very, very good news in the U.S., and right now it's the only place in, in the entire industrialized world where we're seeing really good news come out. We've had all kinds of problems in Great Britain. The Eurozone's wrecked. Um, as as if you guys will remember back, as I said it would be, but I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna turn that screw right now. But I told everybody a couple of years ago that the Eurozone was in far worse shape than America. I think I was even I've been saying it forever, but I started saying it a couple of years ago. And that year the Eurozone was gonna be the real problem. And nobody believed me and they they brought up all these excuses as to why the US was in such bad shape and they pointed out all this stuff. Well, we can look at it now and say as a whole, the US isn't doing great, but compared to the Eurozone, we're doing all right. And that's reflected in the currency. So one of the things that I saw was on the S, uh, on the SPX on the Dow that we were seeing we saw a rally yesterday, but in my opinion, it gets it's probably going to be a selling rally. I just don't I think we're due for some more continued downside. If that's the case, then we may be due for a little bit of uh, a little bit of a rally here out of the pound before we see some some continued decline. So what I'm hoping for is a rally back up in here to around 6090s or 6100s roughly. If I drop down to my 60 minute chart and we just look at the intraday on this and what's happened. Oh, that's not right. Um, let me see. Pound dollar, 60 minute. Let's try that. Um, you're going to see the actual structure for before the fall off was around here around 6114s. So a rally back up into roughly 61s here not out of the realm of possibility. You can see the structure level back here and the most recent structure being somewhere around 60, 60, 60s, maybe 61s, somewhere in there. 
So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna look for let's just call it 6070. Just drop the line in there for a rally, a pop into 6070 for some continued shorting. And where do we think that thing's gonna go? Let's just take a look at the downside here. Um, that 127 extension coming in. Look left, guys. Structure leaves clues. Look at that structure in, inside resistance level there. You got a test there and another test there. That 127 at 15740s going to be a pretty decent level to look for so you know use it as your your higher time frame as as your general direction then start looking for your underlying on the uh, on on your trading time frames and that could be the four hour it could be the 60 minute could be the you know could be whatever time frame you want it to be but typically we deal with swing trading here the euro defying all laws of I just frustrating me is all it is. It's broken through support here, here, here. We're now out here in no man's land. Massive move south that I got caught in uh, as the market reversed itself. On the 60-minute chart, if I bring this thing down, you're going to notice we had a pretty nice little little shelf in here. I actually waited for the market. Uh, I bought the market up on uh, in the hopes that we would see a rally here. Um, we got uh, nothing, and then, boom, the market rolled over. And, uh, and just crushed me as, uh, as we moved into after the news event. So I took a hit there. Japanese yen, let's put this out on the daily chart. If you guys will remember back for a couple of weeks ago when we got around this level, I said, ah, it looks like we may be entering a zone. I think if I even go out to the weekly chart, I can probably ID it for you again. Um, we may be in a zone here where the market finds a little bit of resistance. And I, I went ahead and threw in some Fibonacci retracement and extension levels in here to kind of ID where I thought that was going to occur and, uh, and gave you a range. And we're right in that range now, basically a high coming in here and the lows coming in somewhere around here, I think was where we had it, how I had it bracketed out. Now, weekly chart, we're overbought. We're sitting at 90. And this is the case across the board. If we go back to the euro, you'd see the weekly chart let me just show you the euro on the weekly chart. Euro on the weekly chart sitting at just underneath 20. So we are just, we're falling, falling, falling. I get out on, oh, I'm sorry, let's go to the weekly chart. Excuse me. Weekly chart is just abysmal. Weekly chart is at 5. The RSI is at 5 on the weekly chart. Um, this thing is begging for a rally. And I've tried it. We made some money on the downside. I've tried now twice to pick it up on the upside and been hammered. Um, but guys, this is this thing is just falling off a cliff, and it's uh, it's rare to see something like this. You know, we can go all the way back. I I don't even have anything on this chart. This thing goes back to 2006. We don't have an RSI that low on the uh, on the weekly chart. It's just it's incredible the uh, the depths of destruction that the euro is creating for itself. Uh, but back onto the Japanese yen on the daily chart. We saw the market come into that. We saw the break of structure back down into support. And then, of course, Friday's news event sending us back up against the previous structure highs. Uh, and so, again, any, any break below structure here, if I just go ahead and draw this in, it's going to be a decent area to look to get short. So wait for the market to break structure. If not, you know, your buying opportunity was really back here. But when things are, are in this sort of condition, this sort of vertical uh, movement, I'm really looking for either a pattern formation, like a pendant or something to let me know that the market is getting ready to rally here, or I'm looking for an area to go counter trend with it. And that would be a break of structure. So we'll keep an eye out on that as we move into next week. Now let's jump over and take a look at the pound yen. Pound yen met a massive, and uh, a really nice move down here, and the way we closed on Friday gives me an indication that we're going to see continued downside momentum here. Where could we see it go to? 73.26s? Absolutely. It's a pretty decent area to look for uh, that level because that's the next previous structure level. The market already tested that once right here and, uh, and rejected it with a move higher, so a move down into that zone is definitely a possibility. Now, if you want a quicker trade, you can drop down to the 60-minute chart here, and we can go down and look at the pattern formation that is getting ready to set up here, or that has already set up. And I can go X to A, A to B, B to C, and the C to D is going to complete somewhere around structure level or around the 886 retracement. This is a bat pattern. Okay. 
So looking at it there at around the 886 at structure is going to be a buying opportunity. Now, again, guys, this is if the, if the over the overlying trend is is down, right? Or not actually the underlying trend is probably is not really down. If we go out to the daily chart, um, the underlying trend is still very much up. We're back down into this structure level here where the market is playing around with and we're looking at some continued move downside. But this this market is still bullish. So although you may see a press lower because of the way the Friday's candle closed, the overall market's still looking bullish. So if you're wanting to try and take that bullish move ahead of the continued downside that may exist, you can do so using that advanced pattern formation uh, that we see right there. And these, again, about 60-70% of the time, this is going to be a, uh, a winner for you. So for, for at least a short term, it doesn't mean a total reversal here, but it does mean that we may see some, we're going to see some consolidation in here, highly likely. And so don't bet the farm on these things with a 60% probability. You do not want to bet your whole horse on this pattern playing itself out. But with a probability like that and the risk reward, what it ends up being about one and a half to one at 60%, it ends up being a really, really nice trade every single time it will present itself. So just keep that in mind as you're making your trading decisions. All right. So we talked about the euro today defying all gravity. We talked about uh, the pound yen and its move down and the likely move lower there. We talked about the Japanese yen and how we are starting to see some of that, you know, breaking in, in, the, in the market there that I thought I was going to see up around that level. And then we also talked about the... Uh, uh, pound uh, uh, the pound dollar and the 127 extension there. So several things for you guys to watch this week. And of course, I'll be in the syndicate every single day working with those guys. The live show starts back up next week. Now, if you're not, the live show is something totally different from currency trading and totally different from trading really, period. Uh, what, what the live show is about is it's really a current event show that's held live every single day. It's absolutely free. And uh, we talk about current events, what's going on, and we try and tie it back to how am I going to make money with this? Like it, with my investments, with, my, with any trades that might go on, be it an options play, be it a, you know, an investment play, be it investing in an ETF. Uh, how do I want to play this? So as we come into that, the new show starts tomorrow on Monday. And you can go to theliveshow.tv to, uh, to watch those shows live. And uh, it's it's going to be very very exciting. Now, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, if you keep in mind though, um, this is a fun show that has absolutely nothing to do directly with trading or or trade empowered specifically. It's just something that I want to do because I have an interest in talking about what's going on in the world and really tying it back to okay, how do I position myself to. Uh, you know, if the world is burning, how do I make sure I'm on top of the ashes? And if the world is 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 going straight north, and we're seeing nothing but improvement and and nothing but positive outlook, then how do I capitalize on that and make the most amount of money possible with it? Um, in most cases, we're going to be somewhere in between, where there's a lot of hype about one or the other, but the reality of the situation is really quite different, and that's what we kind of want to focus on. So we're going to be talking about jobs. We're going to be talking about changes in the economy. We're going to be talking about the political decisions that are being made around the world, like the ECB, like what's happening at the Federal Reserve. We're going to be talking about all of those actions and how they affect uh, your life and your money. Now, um, I am, this is, I do not want it to be a, it's not a political show, like it's not a partisan political show. I don't want you guys to think of it like that. Uh, because I, although I do have a very specific view about the way the world ought to work, and I'll be sharing that with you and my belief systems about how the best economies and what makes them strong and what's going to happen in economies based on the decisions that are being made both by companies and governments. Uh, it's not designed to try and sway you one way or the other in, in a political fashion. All I'm trying to do is help better, help better, help people better understand what's going on around them and how to profit from it. And uh, and most importantly is to have a good time. So we're going to have some, you know, just some off the wall funny stuff. We'll be talking a little bit about sports, just whatever interests me, and uh, and the most important things of the day. So I hope that you'll at least check it out. It's the 
liveshow.tv and it starts tomorrow 8:15 central to 9:15 central we'll be running the show and it'll be our first one and I'd I'd love to have you guys out for it so make sure you stick around, or make sure you show up for that and until then good luck and good trading i will talk to you next week <laughs>